Hey guys, how's it going? This is Dr. Kareem Godal. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about inpatient diabetes management and why basal bolus is superior than sliding scale. And towards the end of the video, we'll dive into how to transition from an insulin drip into a basal bolus regimen. But before we get started, if you could please like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Helps with the YouTube algorithm. Let's get started. All right, so let's talk about inpatient diabetes. The way that I like to talk about inpatient diabetes or in the hospital diabetes is very different compared to outpatient diabetes management. In the hospital, our glucose range is going to be different, so it's around 140 to 180. The reason why is because let's say our sugar levels are a little bit on the low side, less than 100. We are at very high risk of becoming hypoglycemic because you're usually in the hospital not for diabetes for other reasons and that can alter your sugar levels. If the glucose level is greater than 180, it can alter wound healing as well as other causes. Again, you're not here for diabetes, you're here for other issues. So you're a little bit more liberal in keeping your glucose higher. Now, inpatient diabetes, I'm going to go over this graph a lot during this lecture. Our x-axis and our y-axis. x is going to be time and y is glucose. This BLD is going to be represented by breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And as you can see on this green line, there's small spikes represented by our breakfast, lunch, and dinner eating patterns. Now, the way that we're going to be treating diabetes, we have a small graph on the bottom left, x and y axis. x, you have your um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, as well as this blue line representing a basal and these red spikes for, for treatment during feeding episodes. The way that we treat diabetes in the hospital is going to be with insulin. So all treatment options in the hospital is going to be by either short or long-acting insulin. Now, how we give amount of insulin is going to be determined by our total daily dose. Our total daily dose is our weight in kilograms over 2. So our blue line represented by our basal rate and our red line which is represented by two our boluses. Okay, so you have our basal bolus regimen. Now how do we determine the amount of insulin to give on this basal bolus regimen? It's fairly simple. Half of it is going to go on our basal rate and half of it is going to go on our bolus rate. So for basal, it's fairly simple. We take our total daily dose and we divide it by 2. For bolus rate, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. You have two things here. You have our carb coverage and you have our ISF. Now, ISF is called insulin sensitivity factor, and we'll talk about it a little bit later in this lecture. But it's a very important thing as you don't see it on this chart. Carb coverage is calculated by 500 over the total daily dose, and ISF is calculated as 1800 over the total daily dose. Now, as you can see in the chart, this blue line is represented by basal rate. So hence, the basal insulin is our long-acting insulin, and these red spikes are represented by our carb coverage. As you can see, there are no green lines in this chart. So our ISF is for spikes. If you are hyperglycemic after our basal, after our carb coverage, then we give ISF. Now let's go over an example. Let's say you have a 60 kilogram gentleman who, what is his total daily dose? His total daily dose is half, so it's 30 units is his total daily dose. And again, it's 30 units of insulin. So now we break it down into our basal and our bolus. Now our basal rate is going to be our total daily dose over 2 or 30 over 2 so that means we're going to get 15 units of long acting insulin this is going to be our insulin glargine or our lantus it's going to cover sugar levels on the daytime as well as nighttime or fasting our bolus you have two you have carb coverage and you have isf now how did we calculate carb coverage we said it's 500 over the total daily dose or 500 over 30 to calculate that, you just use the calculator and you get 16.666 repeating. You can round up or round down. Here I round it up, so it's 17. The 17 represents that one unit of insulin is given for every 17 grams of carbohydrates. Okay, we give this before they have their meal. So if their meal or if their lunch has 17 grams of carbs, we give one unit of insulin before they eat to try to prevent a spike. For ISF, it's 1800 over the total daily dose or 30. And so here we get 60. So now this 60 is going to be for one unit of every insulin that we give. 
their glucose level is going to be falling by 60. So let's say after we give our basal, after we give our bolus, their sugar is 200, and we give one unit of insulin, their sugar level should drop by 60 or 140. Okay? Now, as I said before, in basal, we use long-acting insulin, insulin lantus, insulin glargy. And in boluses, or short-acting insulins, we only want to cover for breakfast, lunch, dinner, or spikes. So we use short-acting insulins for our boluses. Now, let's go over some adjustments. How do you adjust insulin on the fly? So you have your red line, which represents normal, and then you have your breakfast, lunch, dinner on your x-axis, and your y-axis representing normal glucose. As you can see, the sugar level is relatively normal during breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and it's high on the other ends, or during nighttime or fasting. Now, what does that mean? That means you're hyperglycemic while you're fasting. Hmm, that's interesting. So when you're hyperglycemic while you're fasting, that basically means that you do not have enough long-acting insulin. You don't have enough basal insulin. So you have to increase that rate. Okay? Now, in this example, we have kind of the opposite problem. Our black line representing normal insulin. You have your breakfast, lunch, dinner on your X, and your Y axis representing glucose. Now, as you can see here, during breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it's your glucose levels are very high. But while you're fasting, your sugar levels are normal. Now, what does this mean? This basically means that you're hyperglycemic during the daytime, or you're hyperglycemic before and after meals. This means that you're not giving enough carb coverage. You're not giving enough of the bolus insulin, or short-acting insulin. Now, here we try not to use ISF here, because ISF is more of a weight-based. So when we adjust these insulin, we want to adjust carb coverage, not ISF. Now, what's the difference between basal bolus and sliding scale? Now, as you can see on the x-axis, we have breakfast and dinner on the y-axis, our glucose levels, and you have our basal and our carb coverage. Okay? Now, blue represents our basal. Our red represents carb coverage. And we have green here, which is going to be representing ISF. And as you can see, ISF is not on the graph. ISF is for spikes only. So now as we talk about our basal bolus regimen, we use a combination of all three of these things. So we have a basal rate or a long-acting insulins. We have our boluses, which is one carb coverage, or two, we have our ISF, or insulin sensitivity factor. Both of these are going to be represented by short-acting insulins. Now, in sliding scale, it's a little bit different. Not too much different, but a little bit different. Sliding scale, you have a long-acting, or basal insulin, and two, you have a sliding scale. The way I want you to think about sliding scale is by thinking of ISF, okay? So now here, in sliding scale, you have the slide that is checking your glucose after you eat or after you spike. So if you check your glucose after you eat, you're treating your glucose levels after they've already been raised because you just ate. So they've already spiked. So it means your sugar levels are already high. So you're treating after the fact. You can make changes to the insulin regimen after the fact, which is not really the best options. In basal bolus, you're going to be giving insulin before you eat. You're trying to avoid a hyperglycemic phase altogether based off the amount of carbs in the food. So you're treating before the glucose gets high. What ISF is going to do in a basal bolus regimen is, let's say, the sugar levels are high after a basal, after a bolus, then ISF is given, and what you can do on your next meal is you can increase the carb coverage to try to avoid that spike from happening again. You cannot do that on a sliding scale regimen. Now, transitioning from an insulin drip to basal bolus, you have to know when to put a patient on an insulin drip. The most common causes are going to be DKA or HHNK, 
diabetic ketoacidosis or hyperosmolar non-ketosis. If you have uncontrolled diabetes, like your sugar levels are greater than 300, even after you've given a bunch of subcutaneous, or subcutaneous insulin. Or three, you know, they're going for specific surgeries or there's specific diseases such as sepsis that are making the sugars very hard to control. You put them on an insulin drip. Now in this graph, you have your X and Y axis. This is different than before. Our X axis is time and these numbers are representing hours and our glucose levels on our Y. So now you have our 1, 1 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. This is representing units of insulin that are given per hour. So now you can see here from 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock, we have given 1.4 units of insulin every single hour. The gaps just means that the insulin regimen hasn't changed. So over four hours, we have given this patient 5.6 units of insulin. Now, we can convert that into 24 hours. We have given 33.6 units of insulin. So now we know that this patient on an insulin drip is requiring 33.6 units of insulin. Okay, now we can use this to help transition to a basal bolus regimen. So we have 33.6 units of insulin is representing the basal rate. This is assuming that the patient is fasting. If the patient is not fasting, you can still use this, but try to use the timings when they are fasting, such as at nighttime. And once you have the basal rate, you just double that and you get your total daily dose. Okay, that way you can calculate carb coverage and ISF. That's inpatient diabetes in a nutshell. I hope you all enjoyed. If you have any questions or concerns, please leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching. Remember, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Have a good one.